Okay. So good morning, everyone. Um, today, I want to talk about the critical virtue or attribute of persistence. Uh, we know in this business that in order for us to truly succeed and prosper, for anyone, persistence is an essential quality that we need to develop and master. Some people say, oh, you've got to have thick skin. Some people say you've got to be emotionally tough to do this business. What they're really saying is you need to learn to be persistent. And that's a wonderful virtue and quality for any person to acquire and develop if they acquire it um, in the right way uh, or interpret it the right way, yeah? Um, so I wanna talk about what persistence really is and what are some of the soft skills associated with persistence and what are these qualities that we can develop ourselves so that we can develop this aspect of our character and thus improve our chances of success in the Nikken business? Because this is really one of the critical skills. Um, you know, there's, we, we talk about critical behaviors such as building our contact list, extending invitations, doing ABCs, uh, the fortune is in the follow-up. We talk all about these types of critical behaviors, but the bedrock of all of these is really on some of the softer skills, such as our communication skills, our ability to persist, our ability to have a clear vision, and so on and so forth. And as we build those around them, then our behaviors start to get better and more efficient, and we get better outcomes as a result. Okay, so with that being said, Let's look first of all at what persistence is. Uh, some people have said that persistence is a personality trait. It, it is, but it is a, a character trait that we can in fact develop. Um, and it it's really helps us to determine uh, whether or not we can or cannot achieve our goals because anything worthwhile in life we know comes at a price, comes at a cost, and that will always have roadblocks barriers, obstacles, unexpected turns in the journey, and our ability to respond to them and to continue to persist really determines whether or not we win. So um, to that end, I, I love this definition here. It says per uh, persistent people are usually said to have grit. I like that word grit. I don't know why. Um, it's, it's certainly better, in my opinion, than when people say you've got thick skin. I don't like the idea of having thick skin personally. Um, and I think I'm not a particularly thick skinned kind of person, um, but I do like to think that I have grit and, a, and an ability to be determined in the face of adversity to get things done. Uh, so, so that's a starting point there. Um, but these are some other words that are associated with um, persistence. Make a note of these because these are wonderful, um, synonyms, if you will, um, that are associated with this word persistence, determination, resilience, patience. I, I, patience to me is one of my favorite virtues. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures in the New Testament is, in patience possess ye your souls. I love that. Uh, we tend to keep them through patience, and I've seen many people lose their souls as a consequence of impatience. Yeah, rash decisions get made in an impatient frame of mind. Um, so patience is an important part or component of persistence. Endurance, again, our ability to endure is really important because success is not a sprint. It's a long distance run, isn't it? And along with endurance, we have the word stamina. Um, I, I certainly feel, I used to love running when I was younger. Um, and I lived near a lake once. I used to run around that lake on a frequent basis. Now, as I get out to run, there's been a few times recently where I've gone, okay, I need to get fit again. Let's get out there, exercise. And then I start running and it's like, what's going on with my lungs? I don't understand. And, uh, and I realize that my stamina is not what it once was. Um, so what we learn from this, of course, is that things like stamina and endurance perseverance and what have you, are things that we develop through repetition, through our ability to keep doing and to go back and to do again and to do again and so on. But this is something that I think is worthwhile considering because I've seen a lot of people that consider themselves persistent, but the challenge is 
they might stick at it, stay in the ring, so to speak, and keep fighting, but they don't take the time to evaluate what's working and what isn't. They don't take the time to learn new skills. They don't take the time to change certain behaviors. And so they end up getting the same results. Yeah, and as a consequence, that persistence can become very painful and very difficult. Persistence should be a journey of evolution. Um, okay, Yoko's saying, please repeat the words. Yeah, okay, so here are these words again, uh, Yoko. Um, determination. Uh, resilience. Patience. Endurance and stamina. These, to me, help us to define what does it mean to be persistent. We're determined. We're resilient. There's a difference between determination and resilience. Determination really is when you have your mind really strongly set on something, but resilience is your ability to respond when the buffeting winds of adversity come your way and you can stay the course. Um, C.S. Lewis once said, in talking about realism, uh, oops, he, he said that um, you don't learn the strength of an army by lying down, uh, by giving in. And you don't learn the strength of a wind by lying down. Those that are true realists are those that stand against the army and those that stand against the wind. They, they're the ones that experience the full force of the wind and know what it really represents. Those that lie down and give in and give up and quit when the wind blows a little too hard, they're not the realists. They don't really know what it means to, to stay the course and to, and to stick at it and, and what that really means. So um, let me see. Um, uh, Lorraine has just said seven keys to living aligned with your passion, commitment, clarity, attention, stay open, integrity, persistence, and follow your heart. These are a great list, Lorraine. Really glad you added them uh, for sure. So let's, let's look now at what are some of the soft skills that we need to develop in order to improve our ability to be persistent. Because, you know, it's, it's one thing to have an aspirational goal. We start with clear vision. That's really one of the first. It's kind of the starting step of everything. Begin with a clear vision in mind of what you want to be and where you want to be in the future. Vision is future centric. It takes a look at where you are now. It evaluates that. And it says, I want something different or I need to be in a different place down the road. And it defines it and it gets specific. Okay. You want to be clear in your vision of what that looks like. And one way to build your patience in that process is to actually close the gap between how you feel now and how you can feel in the future. Okay. So using your imagination really plays a critical part in developing your patience. Okay. So we start off with having vision, a clear perspective of what we want to achieve, what that looks like, and then articulate it clearly. Articulate it means not just that you've got it in your mind and you know what it looks like, you've got to be able to put it into words. Words give added meaning. So it's really important that you can articulate it, write it down, give that definition of success something tangible to look like. What does it look like? Then associate your goals with it. Track your performance over time, make it measurable, make it specific, make it clear, okay? So that was really, really important. We've got to have a strong sense of purpose in order to be persistent in the first place. If we don't have a strong sense of purpose, our persistence goes out the window real fast, okay? So connecting ourselves to purpose and vision is the starting step of improving your ability to be persistent. People that are not committed to their goals don't really know what their goals are in the first place. There's no real emotional bond or connection. Uh, like I've always said, the, the, the word emotion comes from the Latin word motare, which means to move. The purpose of our emotions is to move us to action. If they don't motivate us, you know, and the word motivate and emotion, you can see are connected, yeah? So motivation comes from emotion. Emotion is designed to move us. If our goals and our vision doesn't move us, doesn't stir us here, make us want to do something, we've got the wrong goals. Yeah. So we've got to make sure that we define them in a way that is genuinely compelling, that motivates us to act in a certain way and makes us take 
take some response uh, into how we feel and get something done. Uh, the next step is simple process, begin to work hard. Hard work is at the center of persistence, of course. Uh, and I think that's pretty straightforward in defining what that is and what it looks like. Uh, set meaningful goals, but then go to work and start acting, take action. Um, give me one second, my little girl has just walked in, so I'm gonna message my wife. Thank you, Abby. Um, there we go. She comes to my chair, you can't see her, she remains out of sight because she's too small, but it's really distracting when she's pulling in my chair wanting me to pick her up. So um, thankfully my daughter's come and grabbed her. Um, th this is an interesting one and people don't often associate this with the need to be persistent or as a soft skill of persistence. And that is to learn the art of persuasion. Why is persuasion and our ability to persuade others an important quality of persistence? Because what we're doing here is we're helping ourselves through the act of persistence to achieve our goals. There are gonna be barriers and obstacles. That's why persistence exists, yeah? Why is persistence there in the first place? Because there is some type of barrier to our success, to our achievement. If there wasn't, and it was a comfortable glide through, you know, a gentle meadow with a breeze behind our back, blowing us in the right direction towards success, then persistence wouldn't exist. There'd be no need for it. So the very, the very existence of persistence says there's gonna be barriers, there's gonna be obstacles. That means along our way, rather than simply just trying and trying and trying and trying, we need to learn the art of persuasion because we might need to ask some people to change their perspective or their viewpoint in order for us to achieve our goals. Maybe there are some people along the way here that we're working with that don't quite see things as clearly as they should be. We therefore need to help them and persuade them to improve and to change and to grow and to think differently. So persuasion then really involves a number of different things. And if you want a great book on um, the art of persuasion, then I would, I'd strongly encourage the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Um, it's such a powerful book and it's been popular for so long for a good reason, okay? Because it, it is necessary in our journey of persistence to learn how to convince others to change their minds from time to time so that we can overcome our challenges or our delays as we go along our journey. So persuasion involves a few things. First, we've got to be able to build a rapport with others. Okay, so what are your rapport building skills like? Can you do it? Can you build relationships quickly? Can you go into a room at a networking event, for example, or a group where you're meeting a new group audience for the first time? Can you build rapport with others quickly? It's been said that it takes less than seven seconds to make a good first impression or a bad impression, a, an impression, yeah? Less than seven seconds. How do you score in those first few seconds when someone meets you? Do you come across professional, refined, articulate, confident, educated? Or do you come across nervous, fumbling, awkward, uncomfortable, shy? How do you present yourself? So this is something that you wanna make a note of and say, how do I make the first few seconds count? Learn to build that rapport quickly. Make those good, strong first impressions. It makes a significant difference in your ability to build relationships with people. In the process as well, another skill of persuasion is our ability to offer meaningful and effective constructive criticism. This is very different from criticizing people. We want to avoid complaining. We want to avoid criticizing others. And if it's, you've got nothing good to say, then you don't say anything at all. If you need to raise an issue, then what's good to do is to do it in a constructive way. So I'm not suggesting that we stay silent when things aren't working out. What I'm saying is we learn to raise concerns constructively. If we're seen as a complainer, a criticizer, a moaner, then we don't help to build those persuasive skills at all because people don't typically like to listen to complainers. Yeah, they do like to hear, listen to people that are problem solvers, solution seekers, 
yeah, and people that are positive in their approach. So when you do come across obstacles and barriers, rather than moaning and complaining to others or criticizing others, what are the effective constructive criticism techniques that you employ? Okay, let's think about that for just a little bit because that art of persuasion really does include our ability to offer constructive criticism in a successful way. Again, I wanna really kind of drill into this persuasion part here because I, I love the fact that this is a subset of the skill of persistence because when we learn to improve this area, then we're being persistent with good intent and in a meaningful way. We're not just banging our head against a wall over and over and over again. It takes our activities for growth and moves them from being the Sisyphean task. Have you heard of um, Sisyphus in, in Greek mythology? Um, Sisyphus in Greek mythology uh, was a bit of a trickster. And as a consequence, he got punished by Zeus. And as a consequence, his punishment was for all eternity to spend a day rolling a big, heavy, oversized boulder to the top of a hill, only to reach the top at the end of the day. And then what happens? The boulder then rolls down to the bottom of the hill and he starts the same task again the next day. It was a punishment of pointless labor for eternity. That's an incredible punishment, isn't it? Pointless labor for eternity, right? Our persistence can become a Sisyphean task where we're pushing boulders up a hill to see it roll back down again, over and over again, getting nowhere, if we don't learn the subsets of what persistence involves, yeah? So when we learn to be persuasive, when we learn to build rapport, when we can help others to change their minds, their viewpoints and their perceptions on things and help them reach new conclusions, and we can do it in a friendly and um, comfortable manner where we're building these healthy relationships, then the results of our persistence start to change. And that's the purpose of persistence in the first place, not simply to show thick skin, but to persist so that we get better results over time. That's why we do it, yeah? So we've got to incorporate the skill here of persuasion as a subset of persistence. Another element of this, take an active interest in people. Encourage them to talk about themselves and be attentive when they do. Show a genuine appreciation for who they are and what they've accomplished. When we do that, people are gonna be more receptive to what you have to say later on. And this is where I guess patience comes into it a little bit. Sometimes we're so excited because of our vision and what we want to achieve that we blurt out everything that we know. You know and we kind of brain dump on people and, um, and have this kind of verbal vomit that we kind of throw up on people because of our enthusiasm, but it doesn't get the results. The best thing that we can do is listen. Encourage people to talk about themselves. And what do they say? People always say, what a fascinating conversation we just have. When in reality, they, talk, they did most of the talking and it was mostly about them. Yeah? But if you want people to be interested, um, if you, you know, find them interesting, yeah? The more you find people interesting, they will get interested, okay, and reciprocate. This is really a principle of emotional reciprocation. So start by investing in them. Be patient in that process. Take the time to learn about others. Find out about them. Fall in love with them. Get to like them, know them, trust them. And that will get reciprocated. That will, that will be a natural consequence. It's a reciprocal emotional experience here. So the next part of persuasion is really important, to be able to position ourselves as a reliable expert. How do people see you when they talk to you? On the subject of NICAM, for example, business, products, health, wellness, society, contribution, all that type of thing, family, the, the NICAM family values that we advocate and champion. Are you an expert in that field? We need to establish ourselves as such. It makes a big difference. When people see you as an expert, they're gonna be more inclined to listen. If you're not seen as the expert, no matter how kind and friendly you are, they're not gonna change their mind because you're not the expert. You gotta know something that they don't. Offer them something that they don't have. And that gives you an edge. 
So we need to be able to find the way to do that and do that well. Okay, so that's the art of persuasion kind of in a, in a brief nutshell there. Another element of persistence that is really important. We've talked about a couple of things already. We've talked about being persuasive. We've talked about hard work. We've talked about articulating our vision, having that clear as well. Another element of persistence here is effective communication. And I say effective because communication can be good or bad, can't it? And communication can be verbal or nonverbal. So how do we communicate? And part of this communication process isn't just in expressing your ideas articulately. It's also being able to understand the needs of others. As Stephen R. Covey once said, seek first to understand and then to be understood, yeah? So this role of listening comes in a number of times in our ability to be persuasive uh, and to be effective communicators. We need to learn to listen well, seek first to understand, then to be understood. An effective element of communication skills as well, and this plays in a lot in NICAM, is conflict resolution. Now you might go, oh, how does conflict resolution Play a part here because sometimes people might have different opinions how often when you're speaking to a prospect or a potential customer might they have a different viewpoint on health and wellness on magnetic technology on the need for organic nutrition or whatever it might be there are a whole host of areas on the definition of network marketing yeah and what this business opportunity represents you're going to have conflict there yeah and that's okay in fact, there's a very famous um, Canadian psychologist, uh, Jordan Peterson. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of him, um, but very well-known um, psychologist said that it's actually a healthy thing to engage in conversations with people that disagree with you. He says, you grow as a person that way. You learn more about life and the world and yourself, right? So don't see conflict. The reason I share that is to emphasize this point don't see conflict as a bad thing. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, it's healthy. People have different opinions, different viewpoints. Um, but if you're wanting to persuade someone to a new point of view, you've got to be able to hear what they say, understand, appreciate where they're coming from, but then have a, a set of skills that can navigate them on their own journey where you can find resolution and agreement. Yeah. So conflict resolution is a big part of our ability to be persistent. Why? Going back to the, my earlier point, because the purpose of persistence is to overcome. Yeah, it's not just to show people something that I'm persistent, that I've got thick skin. That's not what persistence is about. It's about overcoming, it's about achieving. And we can't do that simply by keeping on doing the same things. We've got to see improvement in behaviors and skills. Okay, so we've got to learn to that point to communicate well. So th that includes things like not interrupting when people are, are speaking, learn to take your turn, yeah? And master body language. Body language is a huge element of communication. Learn to understand what people are saying with their body, not just with their words, and also to listen to their tone of voice. What does it mean if you're talking to someone and they're slouched over, if they're pointing their foot if they're standing in your home um, and they're putting their foot towards the door or maybe their body is leaning towards someone else right in the room they're saying i want to talk to someone else or i want to leave right so one of the skills that i've learned um, in understanding body language because we can take isolated signals or cues and interpret them all sorts of different ways yeah it's been said that if you scratch your nose yeah maybe you're not telling the truth right well, you might also have an itch. And, and the reason for that is when, when you're being deceptive, um, it changes your rate of blood flow, yeah? because your heartbeat changes. Yeah? Because all of us, no matter who we are, are not comfortable lying. We don't, we don't like to do that, but people lie all the time. And so when the blood flow changes, that changes uh, our experience in the nano, and we sometimes end up doing things like that, right? <laughs> because it creates a little bit of an itch sometimes but we might just be scratching our nose. I might fold my arms because I'm closed, 
I might just be comfortable or cold. Yeah. So, so it could be a number of different things. Yeah. I could cross my legs and that might be that I'm, I'm really closed off. I might just find that comfortable. All right. So the way to interpret body language is to think of it in sentences yeah, or clusters. So you take a group of body language cues and you put them together. Okay, so if I was scratching my nose, if I am talking to you and I'm looking the other way, if I do have my arms folded, if I am doing all of these things, then you can start to indicate certain signals are coming your way to interpret healthily, yeah? If it's isolated, maybe not so. So think just like we talk in sentences and paragraphs, we group our words together to give them meaning. Do the same thing with body language as well. Group those little signals together into clusters in order to get the appropriate meaning. And that will help you to understand body language so much better. But it's certainly a fun subject. I'm not sure about you. I love body language as a subject and as a topic. It's uh, certainly worthwhile enjoying. Uh, if you want to learn and improve your skills, that's a fun one to jump into and, and to explore. So um, look at things like that, okay? Um, look at not just what people are saying, look at what they're not saying, look at how they're saying it. Uh, look at all the nonverbal cues, L listen to tone of voice. Tone of voice says a lot as well, okay? So, uh, and, and a, a basic example of tone of voice is when I've asked one of my children to do a particular chore that they, I know they don't want to do. And they go, yeah, okay. And I'm like, I beg your pardon? <laughs> I'm not accepting that as a confident yes. Right? I beg your pardon, are you going to do it? Yeah, yeah, no, I will. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a teenager for you, isn't it? Right? No, give me a solid yes. Okay, fine. Yes, I'll do it. Good. Is that a commitment? Yes, it is. Tell it again. Say it one more time. Yes, I will do the kitchen. Okay, good. Now I believe you. Right? But when they kind of, oh, yeah, no, oh, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not believing that. Okay, so look for the nonverbal cues. How are they saying it when they give you, a, when you extend an invitation and they say, yes, I'll do it. Just exactly how are they saying yes, right? Make it believable. Make, you want to get that, that confident response, okay? Open yourself up to learning. This is another element of persistence. What you'll notice here is in being persistent, we are actually learning to change ourselves, not just striving to change an outcome. We're learning to change ourselves. We're improving our communication skills. We're becoming masters of persuasion so that we can convince and persuade others to change their viewpoints. We're becoming active and engaged, competent listeners. Okay, we're doing all of these different things. We're working hard, but we're not just working hard. We're learning to work smarter. Yeah, so we're looking at, okay, if I'm getting the same result over and over again, if I'm getting into the ring and I keep on getting my head boxed, Rather than saying, I'm not going to quit until they knock me out, we don't need to get knocked out in this business. This isn't boxing, right? It's business. We don't need to get knocked out. We can get knocked down, but we don't need to get knocked out, right? So we need to learn, what am I doing here that keeps on getting my head in front of that fist, right? <laughs> Maybe I need to learn to duck and weave a little differently, okay? So we need to look and say, what are my results and what do I need to change? The art of self-evaluation is fundamental for our personal progress. We've got to be able to evaluate our performance honestly, candidly, realistically, see the strengths of what we've done well, celebrate them. That's important too, because an important part of persistence outside of learning and opening ourselves up to learn new skills, another element of persistence, which is key, is self-belief. I am not going to keep on keeping on if I don't believe I can get the results. Yeah, if I believe I'm destined to fail, I'm not going to be very persistent. Yeah, so it's really important that I can evaluate my performance, make the needed changes, and then grow in confidence. And that evaluation, like I said, involves not just seeing the things I'm doing wrong, but be able to see the things I'm doing right and celebrate them so that my confidence can grow. Sherry, you've raised your hand. Do you want to share a thought? I did, and I apologize if you mentioned this because I've had to step away a few times. I've got some work going on in my house. Um, did you talk about the book Grit? Uh, we haven't, no, no. Okay, because that came to mind. I, I was so 
uh, happy to to read that when I read that book and to know that the the basic findings of that book is that persistence is really key over IQ, oh, even over natural talent. Mm. Um, if you have, if you have a, a mindset of persistence, you are like more likely to be successful than someone that it just comes easy to them. And maybe they're smarter than you, you mm. know, it's that. And I, I do remember, I think it was Jim, it was either Jim, Rohn, I think it was Jim Rohn who talked about, you know, how do you, how are you successful? How can you be more successful when you're new and it's that it's more persistence, it's more activity. You yeah. know, you have to overdo it in order to find the to the key yeah. that you're looking for. So anyhow, but I really love that book, Grit, because it really does talk about that. Yeah, no, I love that. That's that's a worthwhile book to recommend. Um, and and you're right, persistence becomes one of these qualities that outstrips natural talent. Isn't that great? Well, that makes me so relieved. That makes me so happy because yeah. it really creates a level playing field here. So right. often we look at others with their natural abilities and we go, well, of course they're going to succeed. Look at, look at how charming that person is. Look at how gifted that person is. Look at how beautiful and attractive and skilled this person is. Hey, I, I can't measure up to that. Well, yeah. persistence can outstrip all of that stuff. Yeah. It puts yeah. it back in our, it really puts the, the ball in our courts. It does. Yeah. Yeah. I'm grateful for persistence. If it wasn't for persistence, I don't think Kim would have married me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm grateful for that. Um, that virtue has been a wonderful blessing in my life for sure. So uh, I wanna just share one last point of persistence and that is to learn to start to think uh, critically. I talked about this principle of evaluation before but we've got to be able to critically analyze our activities, evaluate situations and then make correct decisions as a result. Okay, so critical thinking is a skill set that takes practice and development, um, but it is certainly worthwhile fostering and developing and nurturing. Learn to think critically, analyze, evaluate, um, and make wise decisions as a consequence of that. Um, so, with all of this said, uh, I want to invite everyone to be more persistent. And doesn't that sound now, as we talk about that and say that, sometimes when people say, well, just be more persistent, that sounds painful, doesn't it? If you're feeling stuck and weighed down and troubled and going, oh, I'm not getting the results and my patience is wearing thin and I'm getting tired and this is getting wearisome and difficult. And someone says, just hang in there, be persistent. That's what you gotta do. And you, my natural response when I'm feeling that way is don't tell me to feel, to be persistent. Right, that's not how I feel right now. You're asking me to feel something that is in complete opposition to what I'm feeling. Yeah, but when we break down what persistence means and we look at all these subsets of different skills, if someone was to then say, well, maybe we need to evaluate what you're doing a little more. Yeah, and make some different choices. Maybe there are some new skills that you need to develop. Maybe there is some patience to practice here. Maybe there are some communication skills that need to be mastered. Are you listening well to others? Are you communicating clearly? Are you giving them a chance to articulate their views? What are your listening skills like? Maybe we need to improve this just a little bit. Let's get more persuasive. Yeah, let's be more patient. Let's be more um, encouraging of others. Let's love other people more. And let's make some needed changes to our own skills. And in doing so, we get the different results. Now, all of a sudden, I like the idea of being more persistent because that incorporates so many other wonderful qualities that help me become a better person as well as get better results. So to that end, if you're feeling frustrated with some of the results you might be getting, let's look at this new definition of what persistence means, yeah? And make the needed changes to our behavior and our skill set so that we can get better results and win the race. Thank you all very much. I hope this has been a help and we'll speak to you next week. Take care everyone. See ya. <laughs>